The villain's motivation is probably the first thing that an author should really try to nail down for their story, whether it's in a drafting um, phase or if, if you don't do outlines, at least to have an idea about where the story is going. When, from, from a police standpoint, you hear about m means and motive and, and opportunity. And while only two of them are required in a court of law in, in some cases, it's the motive, it's, it's the, the mindset behind why somebody does things that resonates so much with readers. Uh, it resonates with juries as well. Oftentimes a prosecutor, whether they have to prove that or not, tries to give that insight. It's what drives the story. And so, um, particularly in a crime story, you need to have that mapped out. You need to know whether um, a person is being motivated by revenge or whether um, they're being motivated by love, fear. I mean, these are all fabulous motivators. Money is, is a huge thing, particularly in crime. If you have a heist, it's usually because somebody's trying to line their pockets a little bit more than what they have. And so these will all result in very different tales. Um, money versus love, you know, you, you can take that in so many different directions, and so it's important to nail that down. When, when you're trying to create a captivating villain, you don't want cookie cutter, and there are very few purely evil people. Are they out there? Yes, they are. But that makes for a very boring book, quite frankly. You want people to be intrigued by why this person is doing what they're doing, and really the only way to do that is to give them some, um, some relatable uh, attributes, some, some traits. You know, even one of the most evil characters there is, Hannibal Lecter, he was a very cultured, intelligent person, and that made him a fascinating character. And so you want a well-rounded person, just like your protagonist shouldn't be, you know, dressed in white and have no flaws. You do need some redeeming um, attributes in, in your villain.